Hi everybody, Patty in here. <clears throat> hey, I haven't been here for quite a while. <clears throat> I did have COVID. It wasn't horrible, 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 but it was enough that just really put me out of commission for quite a number of weeks. Whether it was coughing my lungs up or just being exhausted, but I'm so happy to be back. Yeah, I'm happy to be sewing again, specifically embroidering. And uh, I learned this technique from Lisa Shaw. If you're not familiar with Lisa's teaching, she's at sewbubbles.com. You need to check her out. You can learn a lot of stuff from Lisa. She's an excellent teacher. Uh, so she turned me on or told me about this uh, website, as you see on my screen, called clipartopolis.com. And if you look up here, it says in Clip Artopolis that they have free samples twice a week, every Sunday and Wednesday. However, it says that this sample that came up on Sunday is available until, I think it said July 17th. Yeah, Sunday the 17th right here, it says it. So I'm not sure about how often they have them. Well, I, I've already digitized this and I'm going to show you how to do it. This particular flower right here, I have my hoop already hooped up with some stabilizer under it, some tear away. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place this in here and stitch this out and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to digitize it using Stitch Artist Level 1. Okay I finished stitching this one out and as you can see it worked out beautifully. What might you use this for? You could probably use it on pillowcases wouldn't that be pretty maybe make a set of three of them that go along the side. Uh, you could use it maybe on some jeans or something like that. You know, I'm sure you can think of lots of things that you could use it for. But here's the beauty of getting things from Clip Artopolis. I'd like you to look up my, at my screen for a moment. And it says that you can use it for commercial purposes, non-commercial purposes, etc. You can also sell the designs that you digitize into any machine embroidery format. Now you can only uh, sell the digitized, not the source clip art. And you need to give them credit that you got the clip art from Clip Artopolis. But obviously that's pretty cool. If you're somebody that's into digitizing or just learning and you wanna practice, practice, practice until you feel good enough to maybe sell one of your designs, you know, this is a good source of things. I don't feel like I'm at that level yet. A friend of mine wanted me to digitize something for her, and I'll show you what it is right here. Uh, this is just a heart that I digitized and I made it have satin stitches because what she's going to do with this is to make something that will go on the back of a jacket or whatnot using fabric from someone who may have passed away as a mem memory piece. So I did this for Vicki and you know she can use this she says you should sell it in your etsy shop but no i i really feel like i need to um get better before i would ever sell anything and i'm not really into that anyway but if you are into selling things clip artopolis would maybe be a good way to go so let's go up there and i'll show you how i digitized it as i said i'm not an expert you may be better than me or no better than me but this might just be the little kick in the pants to get you started Okay, here we are in Embrilliance, and as I said, I'm using Stitch Artist Level 1. And I can show you that by going to the Help menu and the Serial Numbers, and the only one I have <coughs> excuse me, installed right now is Stitch Artist Level 1. So that's all you need to be able to do this. Here is the image that I use, and this is the one that I've already digitized. So let's open up a new window or a new page and do it again. I'm using a 4x4 four four hoop. I just chose that. You can make it bigger or smaller, whatever you'd like. Uh, I need to bring in the photograph, the picture. Oh, let's look at Clip, Clip Artopolis for a moment. When you do this, <clears throat> the free download, I download the JPEGs. That's what I use. So I downloaded those and then I had to extract them because they were zipped. Okay, back again to Silhouette. <clears throat> So I want to bring that JPEG picture in here, but I don't know how. Well, I do know how I'm going to show you right now. Since you have Stitch Artist Level 1, 
And I'm not sure if you can just try that out, but not be able to save things. You may be able to download it and play along with me, but not save things unless you purchase it. But you go up here to this little thing and that opens up the create menu. Right here, it brought all these things in. You see that? So if I click that, they're gone. And, and then there's the menu. So I'm gonna come over here to image and I'm gonna find that image. Um, and it was number eight that I did. So I'll do that one again. So there it is, and I've already resized it so it fits. You can resize it by just dragging in the handles like with any program, just like that. Okay. So what I decided to do was to not do this little piece right here because I didn't think it was necessary. So let's scroll in just a little bit. That. Hold down my space bar if I need to move this around. See how my cursor turns into a hand and then I can drag this around. All right, so I'm just going to start with the green leaves. Now again, oh, by the way, Lisa has shown this in her videos too. Let's suppose you bring this in and you can't see it. If this little button right here is toggled off, this is the show or hide background image. So if I can't see my background image, but I can see that it's over here, I need to toggle this back on and there it is. All right, so I'm just going to start with the green. And again, I am in create mode because that allows me to do this right here, draw with points. So I think that I will start with this leaf right here and I'm going to click to add a point and then I'm going to go way up here hold down my shift key and add a point. And then I'm gonna come down here, shift and add a point. The shift just makes it so that a, a node or the, every time I shift it, that's where a needle will actually prick the fabric, will actually go into the fabric for sure. So now I'm going to go over to here a little bit and then go up and down. I'm holding down my shift key because these are actually pointy little changes that's, that are being made. When I get to right here, I'm just gonna right click and that ends it. And then I'm gonna come up to this little thing that looks like a tomato and it says close open outline. I'm going to close my outline. All right, now it's a little bit hard to see this right now, be, what I've done because this background image is pretty dark. So I can come over here where it says image and notice I can now change the transparency right here so I can see my stitches a little bit more clearly. So notice they're not on the lines where I need them to be. So, oops, oh, let's see. Oh, I've got to change these. So right now, notice I wasn't able to do anything. Right now, this is just considered a line. I need to change it into stitches and I'm going to change it into run stitches, which are right here. And, but not just any old run stitch, I'm going to make it the type that's called a bean. And a bean stitch with a three count pass is gonna go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm gonna change the color because this is my leaf. And I can actually uh, do color name and I can, just type green and I need to go to threads and type in th green and say go and there's a green so I'll say okay all right now I'm able to go ahead notice when I put my cursor over that stitching line that run line do you see how it changes into that little like sort of like a curvy backwards s that if I hold down my mouse key I can pull this so that it kind of matches up with the leaf that's already there. I can do the same thing, whoops, over here. Pull that, and then these little handles allow me to adjust things even more. Now, you may be wondering, well, do I have to be exactly, exactly on that flower? No, not at all, because no one's gonna even see that flower. That's just your reference for getting started here. So that's pretty good to start with. Uh, let me show you now what you can do with this program to see how it's going to work. Let me 
to come up here to this needle and it's going to allow me to see how this is going to go. So if I click right here, notice it's showing me and I can actually make my image even more transparent so we can see. So run that again. Okay, there's something right here that I really don't like the look of. Uh, I'm going to fix that a little bit. See that how that crossed over? So let me come back to image again and let me bring it up just a little bit. Okay, so what's happened here is my run stitch. Let's go back to create mode so I can mess with those. My run stitch is kind of folded over on itself. So I'm going to take these handles and kind of stretch it. Is that helping it not cross over? Nope, that's making it even worse, right? So if I go this way with this handle and this way with this one, then it's perfect just like that. And notice I decided not to stop here, but rather just continue on. So let's go back to the hoop view where we see the whole thing and let's watch it stitch out again, see if it looks better. Yeah, much better, much, much better. Okay, so now we can go on to the next one. As I said, I'm going to just mess, leave this one alone. And notice that I connected all these so I don't have jump stitches. So I'm going to, oh, I don't see my stitch thing here. I don't see my draw with points, so I have to come to the create mode. Click on this and start click. And when I get to this point, I'm going to hold down my shift click. When I get to this point, hold down my shift click and then come up, hold down the shift, and see, I didn't hold down the shift right at the right time, so it sort of made it a rounded one rather than a cusp. So let me scroll in so you can see that more clearly. See that rounded one? So if I go backspace, it'll go back to a couple. There we go. So I went here to here to here. Hold down my shift so I can go up to here, and then I'm holding, still holding down my shift here and I'll right click and I'll say close the design and again I'm not going to be able to do anything with these lines yet because they are simply lines if you look over here so I need to change it from a line to see artwork with no stitches I need to change it to a run I could change it to a satin stitch if I wanted to but I'm not going to do that I'm going to change it to a run stitch and it's still on the bean and it should still be the color I used before. So now I should be able to once again drag this out to make it fit. Drag this piece out. See how easy this is? As I said, maybe, you know, some of you have done a lot more than I have right here. And you know some tricks that I don't know. But guess what? The more I practice, the better I'll get and the more I'll learn. So there is that one. So it's a run. Look over here. We have the regular image. We have the first leaf and the second leaf. Let's turn our image transparency down, way down. And I'm going to scroll back out to the hoop. So we see the whole thing. There's the two leaves. And let's watch it stitch. So I clicked on that. And now I'll just simply click and I can make it go a little slower if we'd like and you see how it's going back and forth back and forth that's because it's the bean stitch so this is just one of the many many designs that you can get so this is kind of like a red work or sometimes they call it blue work but look how easy it is to do this and it turns out beautifully so that one's finished so now I need to what get my image back so I'm going to click on this make it so it's not trans totally transparent and I'll go on to this leaf right here okay again I'm going to remember to make sure I'm in the create mode if it if I change something click on this that allows me to draw with points and I'll just start here and come all the way over here hold on me shift and click come down here holding shift click holding shift click 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 and click and right click and then say close so now I can just move these around
I actually like doing this with the nodes. Whoopsie. I find it's relaxing. So this is going to go up like that. This is going to come over, over. Hmm. Well, now I think I was wanting to go like this, boom, 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 but I don't think that I really need to. So I can just let that piece go up like that and allow that to go like that and that to be like that. Uh, Okay, let's see, make sure I don't have any crosses. I'm a little worried about right here. Oopsie, looks like maybe there's something crisscrossed right there, and it is. So if I take this, and again, like we did before, use the little nodes, or the little things, to pull it apart so they're not going over top of each other. Let's scroll back out to the hoop and see how does it look. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. This is where it's gonna start and this is where it's gonna stop. I could put them together like that. So let's go and check this one out. So again, I'll hide the image and use the needle and go. And of course you can speed it up by that little slider right here. Okay. okay, and like I said, notice that this little line is here, but of course no one is going to see that flower. They're just going to see the stitches that you've made. All right, the next thing we'll do is just go on to the red part and I'll just do a little bit of that. These, I just went like this. I started here and went up and down, up and down and quit. This outer flower, rather than leaving these gaps right here, I did attach them. So I'll just show you that part. So I'll start right here and go up here, here, and down to about here. Hold down my shift because I'm gonna make an angle there. And hold down my shift. Shift and right click and then close it and then change them into run stitches and it should still be beans. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make these lines more meet um, the drawing as it is. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do see some lines crossing over each other right there that I don't want to have happen. Here's another one. I must be doing something weird to make that happen. But I'm not sure what yet. Because <laughs> it seems like it happens on most of them for me. So again, I'm just going to take this little handle needs to go that way and this one must need to go that way here we go looks good all right I think that's gonna be fine just like that I'll change the color of this run stitch now by coming over here and I'm gonna change it and for threads I'm just going to type in the name red and hit enter there's a red say okay all right, so let's, I'll do one of these and then we'll see what we've got and then that'll be the end of this tutorial. All right, so there's that stitch again. I'm gonna start right here, stitch, hold down the shift to make a cusp, holding down the shift all the time as I'm going up and down because of these angles here and like that. And then I'll change them into a run. The color should, well, it went to a different color. So let's see, there's the palette that I have right here. These are the two colors that are in my design. So I can choose that same red and say, okay. And now I can just go ahead 
Oopsie. Oh no. Undo that. So let's see. Is that a run? Let's double check what I've done. It's a run. Okay. So now I can go like this and just kind of make them look a little bit better. Like that. Okay. So let's just watch one more time. I'll make the image transparency down low. And I'll get the needle up here, the stitch simulator. And I'll make it a little bit faster for us. Oh, so hold on just a sec. Not sure why did... Okay, so that is up here first. If I don't want that to stitch first, but I want it to stitch last, I can just drag this color down here on top of the one I want it to be underneath. And notice it moved it. So now, if we do the stitch simulator, it's going to do the leap the leaves again first and then the big flower and then that part and then of course I'll do the rest so I hope you like this tutorial I like using stitch artist level one I'm a newbie just like you so we're learning together um, I'd love to see what you're able to do don't forget to go to clip artopolis and grab these flowers if you'd like to use them and practice thanks again hey give me a thumbs up if you like my tutorials and leave comments down below Love you guys. Bye.